great. Um, yes, today I'm going to be ta talking about um, not just getting on and riding your horse, but actually training them. And so what my goal is when I train is to build a well-muscled, supple, athletic, happy athletic horse so that he can do the, the movements of a dressage test easily and without um, negative tension. So when I train, I think of myself as his personal trainer. And every session that I do with him, unless it's a hack out, a day off, um, we, is a, like me taking him to the gym session. Because if you want to train towards something, imagine you're a person and you, you, you say, I'd like to do a triathlon, only a baby one, a little one, in three months' time. But I'm just going to come home from work and sit on the couch and watch, watch on the television people training to do triathlons and watching them do triathlons and I'll be able to do it. And you know what? They probably could do it because essentially dressage is easy unless you want to do it well and then it's really hard. <laughs> so the, the person training for this, this baby triathlon has an 8 meter, 100 meter swim uh, eight kilometer run and a 10 kilometer bike. You can tell how much I know about triathlons. <laughs> and so they go and do it without training and they get through it. They don't look very good. They come probably you know, near the bottom of the field and the next day they're so sore and they're so over it, they think, my gosh, I will never do that again. So it, if they went to the gym every day and they had a personal trainer and the trainer said, okay, we have to start with some uh, with a, some session goals and then a weekly goal and then a goal for the end of three months and then you can do your triathlon and then we'll see how you go and, and then that person gets done the triathlon, they complete it and the next day they feel pretty good and they think, right, I want to get, get better at the swim, I want to get better at the run, better at the bike so the next time I go a little better in the triathlon. It's exactly the same when we're working with the horse. I want to build up the muscles of the horse to um, to create this beautiful athlete and to do that I need to be able to control, isolate and flex every single part of his body. So when we start working with the horse at the beginning, in, when they're in primary school, you teach them the first three elements of the training scale, which is rhythm, suppleness and contact. Now this guy, Bossado, he's seven. So he's in about high school, grade 11 or 12. So he knows how to yield to the leg. He knows to stay in one rhythm. He's supple enough at his level. So his gym session is a little bit different from a four-year-old's gym session or a five-year-old's gym session. But essentially, there's a lot of things that hopefully you'll be able to take home and work with your horse and start thinking about um, you know, each session being a gym session. So always in the beginning, we start with the warm-up because hopefully if you have a good personal trainer, they don't, you don't turn up at 10 o'clock and they put you on the treadmill and put it really fast and say, stay up or you'll end up out the back window. Hopefully they put you on the treadmill at a slow, at a steady pace. And so the, the, the goals of the warm-up are to build or to warm up the muscles of the horse gradually to more intensity, to check that they're yielding in, or giving in the jaw at the pole, that they're yielding to the leg, and they're seeking the contact. And right from the beginning of the session, it is very important that the horse carries itself. How do I know if it's carrying itself? How do I know if it's in self-carriage? Can I give the rein and he stays in exactly the same tempo, one trot, one trot, one trot by himself and without running away? and without needing me to hold him on the bit. It's very important that we never hold the horse together. Then we get big muscles and you don't achieve your goal of building your horse up to have good muscles. So in the beginning, I start with a little bit lower frame just to, again, warm the muscles up to more intensity and I do some transitions. And to make a downward transition, I imagine I have a ball, an imaginary medicine ball between my knees and when I make the transition, you have to try not to use your rein because the goals of dressage are to try to get the hind legs to take gradually more weight in the session and then, then you're developing this muscle, well-balanced horse that can easily do the dressage tests. 
And all the time that I'm even warming up, here I go, close the ball so I don't pull back on the rain, and trot. And every time they make a mistake, it's a perfect training opportunity. We don't want to miss training opportunities. Hopefully he will give them to you, give them to me today so I can show you. So every session, I have a plan for this session, but this is a very abnormal uh, man-made atmosphere, so I might have to dump that plan. He might start tilting in the bridle. And if I do nothing about that tilt, then I approve of it. I say, yes, that tilt is exactly what I want, and I want you to take that with you into the next movement, and the next movement, and the next movement. If he starts to tilt, it's actually a perfect training opportunity for me to, to address it. Because everything you accept, you, you say to the horse, that is absolutely right, and I want you to do that in the dressage test for the judges on the weekend. So everything that goes wrong, you try to be that disciplined and focused when you're riding. If you give the horse 100% of your attention, you can expect them to give you 100% of your attention. So he makes a boo-boo, perfect training opportunity. Now I just go into the little bit the trot again. Again, I'll just make a downward transition, close the ball, and into the walk, and trot. Tuck. If he doesn't listen to my leg, perfect training opportunity, I can... Um, reinforce my aid so that he listens and takes me a little more seriously. Here I'm just checking in the warm-up, is he yielding my, to my leg? On the warm-up you can check all these things to see. If I have a problem, I may have come out that day to work on my 4.3 movements or something, but then I have a little problem in the warm-up and it takes me 15 minutes to get through and I have to get off at a certain time to get in the shower to get to work so I'm just going to take, I'm just not going to worry about that problem in the warm-up and do the rest of my session. This is not good training. What you should do is work on it, take as long as it takes. If it takes 15 minutes, it takes 15 minutes. And then the next day, so you dump that plan that day. The next day, hopefully, that little problem is not there anymore and you can do the plan the next day. So don't take any problems with you. So when I'm walking... I have to ask myself, is he walking in front of my leg? Is he walking straight? Have I got complete control over him? Then I say, yes, now let's take that into trot. I start to bring him up a little bit now, more into other, an, a little bit higher frame. And I start to work on asking him to take a little bit more weight to the haunches. So invite him smaller but active, and then going forward. The horses learn through repetition. So what I'm doing here is I'm training the sitting muscles of the horse, only a little bit, we're still warming up, and then the pushing muscles. It's the first two steps out of the sit. That, so the first step, the first push from the left hind, the first push from the right hind, that I'm interested in training. And now I invite him to sit. Just got a little inactive then, so instead of staying there, I just say, oh, perfect training opportunity. Let's come back and again, invite him to sit, active, active, try not to use my rein, because that blocks what I'm trying to achieve, so then I make it really hard for myself. And of course, I want to be a lot better in the, as a rider, so I make mistakes. So I'm very, very lucky I have a, a coach that I work with every, every week, and I would hate, I'd love to have every day, but can't afford that and smaller, and smaller, active, and then bigger, push, good boy. And every time they do something good, see we're very quick sometimes to say, oh you didn't make, you didn't do a good job of that, do it again. We have to be as quick to praise them when they get it right. Into the walk, check it, transitions, oh, smudge that, perfect training opportunity. Ask again, walk crisply, on my aid and trot crisply on my aid. Very good. Also, when I'm warming up here, I'm thinking about where I'm going because if precise dressage test riding requires precision, there is only one diagonal line, there is only one center line, there is only one 20 meter circle line. And if I'm on the wrong line, you know, near enough is not good enough. So always in my head I'm thinking, Ride, ride, have a plan. Go, your, your goal, okay, so my goal now is to make a 20 meter circle at B. I'm gonna do a little, couple of little training things there where I push on 
and then I invite him to come back again without my reins. Oh, are you going to snort? Wonderful. Another one? Oh, good. This is a sign of relaxation. He's releasing, um, he's starting to breathe in a cardiovascular way, which I didn't expect in this atmosphere, so I'm very happy. <laughs> I invite him smaller, and he's just come behind my leg, so I send him on. And then again, I invite him smaller, just again, close the ball, close the ball, close the ball, and push on. You see him a little bit behind my leg again. And so I ask him again to come back, but to think, can I, I want him to ask me, can I go on? Can we go on now? And I haven't got it yet. So I invite him smaller and smaller and then bigger. And again, I'm training the sitting muscles and the pushing muscles. And I'm also thinking of my accuracy and the pushing muscles. And now I invite him to sit and to sit. Oh, he came back a little bit tight. Maybe I tightened. When something goes wrong, we always have to say, gosh, did I tighten? Did I cause that problem? And then next, and try it again, do something different. Think about what your coach would have said. And then forward again. Repetition is the key. And ask him back. And hopefully I can get him more and more to the haunches. Remembering the goal is to get the horse more and more to the haunches. That collapsed a little bit to the forehand. So I do it again. And here I'm thinking after A, four strides straight, two strides out of the corner to K. That's, what, that's the precision you need to think of at this level. And I invite him smaller and smaller and then into the walk. Yep, okay. Whoop, came behind my leg. Perfect training opportunity. Go and do it again. Ask again and smaller and active and active. I invite him to be more active with my leg. He answered me. I'm happy. Good boy. And then walk. That was better. Perhaps I did it better. And the canter. And then he starts to come a little more uphill. And going on. Good. And invite him back. But again, not using my rein. If I use my rein, he will tighten and I will lose the quality of the canter, which is not my goal. Now I start some little bit travers inside leg at the girth and I'm asking the hind legs not just to come in but to come underneath himself it becomes more and more to the haunches good boy when I'm happy I take a little bit shoulder four and now on the next long side if I'm happy that he's in self-carriage thinking forward if I have the feeling that he's saying to me can we go on can we go on not can I come behind you that's an opportunity oops there, he gave me a perfect training opportunity. He said, oh, I know what you're doing. We're doing half pass. I'm going to start now. So he gave me an opportunity to say, ah, no, wait. And here it's not just pushing the quarters in. It's pushing the quarters under, asking the horse to take more and more weight to the haunches, under, under. And so if I'm a little bit in front of him, how can I influence the hind leg? So our position is very important. You can see I'm trying to give away my inside rein. Very good. Hold the counter canter, but not with my rein. Whoop, that's scary. <laughs> and trying not to hold him in this frame with my reins because then again I'm making my goal very impossible to achieve. Set up the change, got him in my new outside rein. I'm happy with the canter. Aid, change, good boy. And then we go on, have some fun. And then invite him to sit again. <laughs> invite him to come more to the haunches, to sit, train the sitting muscles. And then we go on and yee-haw, have some fun. Good boy. And then, again, inviting him to come smaller. I'm not happy with the way he came back. So I said, oh, perfect training opportunity. Let's try again to come back. And again, he's a little bit behind my leg, so I say no. This is what could take time, which unfortunately, you know, I don't have today. And come smaller and think forward. Think to, I want to feel that's better. Wasn't happy with the transition. We repeat it. I want to, I want to feel him saying, can I go on? 20 meter circle at S. Again, inviting smaller, smaller. Yeah, I'm happy. Can I pull it off? Can I pull it off? Yeah, I was happier with that. Room for improvement, but happier. Now I give him a little break. Or him, me. <laughs> no, him. Um, it's very important that after seven minutes, 
roughly, that you give the horse a break. They need time to get oxygen back into their muscles and they need time to get their, to, it's called partial recovery. So to bring the heart rate back to a level that they can keep doing the movements well. If you just flog and keep going and keep going and keep going and he, they start to get tired in their muscles and they start not to be able to do what you want them to do, we have to take responsibility of that. And when I take a break, I always think of the free walk in the long rain or the extended walk, uh, the way I want it in a dressage test. So I'm practicing what I want to achieve in the test. I'm not, you know, on a free rain, look at the birds and all that sort of thing. I'm really focused about the walk I want to show the judges. And if he, there is a mistake, I correct it. And that mistake could just be the line. I imagine I'm the driver of a train, and if he goes over here a little bit, and I say I don't do anything, then I haven't been a good coach, a good trainer. If he derails off the line, it's our job to say, oh, you made a boo-boo. Oh, this is the line I want you to ride. You have to have that much control over the horse to be able, again, to turn them into a happy athlete. So I start to pick him up and I do a little bit of the more intense work in the canter and check that I have the horse that I want first. I don't just throw him into travers. I check that I have bend around my inside leg, that I have the self-carriage, that he is thinking forward. He is, but it's a little bit underneath, like a little bit to the forehand. There, that's better. And forward again and invite him back again. All right, now he feels a little bit more in front of my leg. So now maybe I can do a little bit a trick. Ask the horn just to come underneath himself. I don't block because if I block, I make that goal impossible. And then into the shoulder four. Oh, he came a little bit to the forehand. Perfect training opportunity. But you try not to use your reins. Good. Now I go forward. Have some fun. Think forward. Invite him smaller again. And prepare the half pass. Again, do I have the bend I want? If I don't have the bend I want, why do the half pass? But I have. I'm happy. So we go on. And a little bit more forward because I've been working with Anna this week and she's helped me a lot. Not sure that I'm putting it all into practice, but anyway, <laughs> that's a job for next week. <laughs> okay, the counter counter, do I have the balance? Do I have the, no, I haven't got the counter. You can see he's, he's expecting it, he's waiting for it. And I say, oh, I know you know, but I want you to wait. So I'm holding my legs in left canter position and I'm trying to create the horse or the canter, or both, that I want to make a flying change out of. It's not just about doing the change, it's about getting quality in the change. Good, it's coming. There, 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 aid, change. Good boy. Could have still gone wrong, that's horses, but I was in a better opportunity to try to train it. Next I might do some counter pirouette work. Again, I ask, is he thinking forward? Not enough. So we go on, invite him back. This is enough think good thinking here for me to say, okay, let's make a working pirouette. And again, even here, I try to change gears. I make this canter a little bit longer, asking myself, if is he in self-carriage? Just came behind my leg. So I'm not going to make it any harder yet because he lagged. And is he thinking forward? Nope. So we go forward again. When he is thinking forward, then I can make the degree of difficulty a little bit smaller. My inside leg is crucial here to keep the bend, to keep the activity, and to make sure the inside hind leg doesn't step to the side. Now he's just come behind my leg. Perfect training opportunity. Out we go. Try again, but first I might rejuvenate and refresh, have some fun, and then invite him smaller without using my rein. Close the ball, close the ball, close the ball. Good boy. And then again, can we have this forward thinking attitude that I can make a more difficult movement, ask the hind legs to take the weight, inside hind leg, active, active with my inside leg, and go out, good boy. And then I set up the change, but again, I think to myself, is this the canter that I want to change from? Is this a good attitude? Wait, he's propping again. You can see him going, oh, change now. What about now? Are we going to do it now? Now? And I'm going, no, wait, 
wait till I say. Again, I'm holding my legs in right canter position and I wait, there is a good chance. Aid, change, good boy, good. And I, when I, I'll do some trot, because you always do equal work on both reins. And I wasn't happy with the transition, so I do it again. Equal work on both reins. You practice some, some movements of your test that you're building the horse so that it's able to do what you want it to do. Again, it came to the forehand, so I try it again. So I like that sign. <laughs> so I have to ask myself, am I talking too much and not concentrating? I want active, yeah. And then just on my seat, push him into trot, good. I was talking too much, good. All right, now I have to check that again, I have him in balance. I might just do a little engagement check. Does he respond? And without using my reins, I try to bring him into speed control to bring him back under the control with the engagement, the feeling that I just had when I pushed, good. Now I bring it into control, close the ball and invite him back again. Then we can start some lateral work, the shoulder in, where I ask the horse to again bring the inside hind leg underneath himself and I take the same bend into travé. It's exactly the same bend, shoulder in, and I do travel on the half meter circle. And again, my goal is to ride the outside hind leg underneath himself into this magic third dimension that I'd love to be able to get a bit more access to. Underneath himself, keeping the rhythm, keeping the self-carriage, that I'm not holding him because then I'm not doing any service to him. Shoulder in, and I'm going to ride this to the flowers, the half pass, the same bend that I had in the traverse, I take into the half pass. Again, can I give the inside rein? Because if I can, that means I have enough bend. Tuck, wake him up and invite him back without using my rein because then I do a disservice to him. Check the shoulder in right. The rider should always aim never to do something out of a habit. That you never take the inside rein or kick out of a habit, that you have a goal or a plan when you take the inside rein, or you invite him with the inside rein to look a little bit more to the inside, that it's for a reason and that you achieve it. Here's the shoulder in, take it into the travers on the circle. Active outside hind, can I engage it a little more? Always challenging yourself. The person who goes to the gym every day but never gets out of their comfort zone, the small steps in the half pass, let's see. Here's me challenging myself. Small steps and big steps. In the movement, we can change gears. If I never challenge myself, then, then I never get better. The horse doesn't get fitter, doesn't get stronger, doesn't get more supple, doesn't achieve our goals. So always equal work, both sides. Same bend, never take the problems with you. Every mistake's a perfect training opportunity. Give them breaks. And I always think about them as the movements that I don't like doing. <laughs> and they are the medium and extended trots, especially sitting, <laughs> and um, the center line. So I, if I leave them alone because I don't like riding them, then they don't get better. So for me, I think, right, I don't like riding them. I need more practice at them. Therefore, we practice them. So I make sure I do some of my nemesis work, and not just the, the work that I like to do, which is the suppling. <clears throat> and I know in my head I haven't done the left canter pirouette. I don't think, no, I did do it, sorry. Okay, good, I give him his little break for partial recovery, let the muscles gain some oxygen so the next day he's not a grumpy oh, man that he's happy to work again. I try and train them four or five days in the arena, one day out, but always with a goal. And if I have a competition in a few weeks, the training goals are a little bit different. I start piecing together movements of the test, make sure I do a test once a fortnight, and I redo any parts of the test that I weren't happy, wasn't happy with. 
So if I do a shoulder in right and he's coming a little bit to the forehand behind the leg, turn away, do it again. Sometimes it takes me a whole session just to get through a test. <laughs> Sometimes I have to redo the center line 10 times before I'm happy. And then my session's over because they're tired. <laughs> All right, so I practice my center lines. So I did there to, I would do it again because he, he came, I wasn't, I didn't have him completely under control. Do I have the bend around the inside leg? Two strides straight, one, two, four strides straight to A, two, three, four, turn to the center line and on the center line, shoulder four. So there's people that see, can only see two legs, invite him to come smaller without using my rein and then go forward, good boy. Maybe next time I come up the center line, I'm happy like that. And, and um, I do the halt. Good, and I might just refresh this again and have some fun and pushing and practicing the medium and then inviting him smaller, smaller, smaller. Two strides straight after F, four strides straight to A, up the center line, shoulder four, sit tall. I wanna make a good impression from the beginning and invite him to come to the haunches, to the haunches, to the haunches, and halt. Uh -uh. And usually at home, I check with the mirror. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> and then I practice the departure, which should be straight to trot. Good boy. And the next movement of the test is always the extension, which I just hate, which is obviously why they put it there. <laughs> and smaller, and then bigger. I always rise the first one because Sometimes there's, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Remember I said I don't like them. <laughs> so maybe I make a few mistakes and I don't want to um, hinder him. Uh, good, so I do another one. And there were a few mistakes, which is why I am doing it again. I want one trot. I want the hind leg to come over the track of the front leg on the straight line. And when I invite him back, not using the rein, Good boy. Good. Maybe there's a little bit more. We have to try to challenge ourselves to train on the edge a little bit. Otherwise, it's just a little bit coming, tipping to the forehand. Oh, good. I used, I did what I hate doing. I took a shortcut. Ugh. Sometimes we do them when we ride tests. I hate them. I have so much damage control the next day. Ah, it's just frustration because I want to be better. Okay, don't use your rein. Ride the hind leg under. Don't use your rein. It's not your fault if I can't do this. And smaller, 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 and invite him to halt. Leg at the marker. See, and I'm overshot it. In the rein back, nothing to do with your hands. Always just the seat and the leg. Good boy. And forward. If you use your rein, Oh, he wasn't thinking forward, coming out of it. Perfect training opportunity. And again, pushing into the halt. And maybe because I'm not concentrating, but I should have practiced that at a marker because I overshot it there. So bad training. I do it again. My goal is P and I push to it and I drive to it and I've overshot it. But I'm happy because I didn't take a shortcut. So, I'm happy with him. It wasn't him, it's me. And again, you have to be pretty tough on yourself. You have to have a lot of determination and discipline. Sometimes you have to wear them down with your patience, with your corrections. So my goal is E, hind leg under, hind leg under, and push. Again, I overshot it. I'm thinking in my head something that I worked with Anna this week, and I'm not putting it together very well. <laughs> I try again at C, bend, push together, into the halt, Ugh. square, say yes, yay, <laughs> okay, I was happy with that, but I'm still a leg mark, I'll work on that next week, <laughs> and so I've done my, my work on, I've balanced my session, and now at the end, I always usually do something um, like the center line and halt and be happy with that. But now I'm just going to let him have the long line again. Check that he's still as happy as he was at the, at the beginning, that he's seeking the contact without speeding up. So even here, 
He's in self-carriage. The wither is still up. The hind leg, I hope, is still coming to the track of the front leg, even though I'm not chasing the activity. And here I can just invite him smaller in the trot by going slowly posting in the saddle. So rise, slow, rise, slow. Good boy. And out of it. So we can influence the speed of the horse without using the rein. That's just for us to practice. You know, it's not their fault if we need to get better. Own your mistakes, you know. Don't, don't blame the horse. Own your mistakes. Go, oh, I need to practice that more. Good, good, and out of it again. Good, I check. Is he following, is he yielding in his jaw to the right? Good, because that's the hardest joint in the horse's body to supple. He's a little bit behind the vertical now, so I just give him a little kick, kick, because I don't want to use my rein, because that's a shortcut. Don't fall off in front of everybody. It wouldn't be good. And slowly posting again. Good, slowly post, slowly post, slowly post. So every time I ask for something, I'm going to flex to the right just to see if I can. It's not out of a habit. It's for a goal. It's for a reason. Now I'm going to ask him, Kenny, if I flex his, jo his pole in his to the left without losing control over this side of his body, can I flex left? Good boy. When he gives, now I'm going to invite him smaller with my seat aid. Smaller. Good. Can I invite him bigger? Good. So you check these things. And if they're not so good, then you don't move on. Don't take problems with you. Because then you accept sixes. Every time you do something with a fault, you practice a six. And if you don't try and make it better, that means you're happy with 60%, which you might be. But <clears throat> that's not what I'm training towards trying to do. And we get very confused about this happy athlete idea. The horse would be really happy if you came in the morning and you said, OK, do you want to go and do a gym session or do you want to go and eat in the paddock and have some grass? They would go, oh, is this a trick question? <laughs> I'll eat grass. <laughs> so they don't say, oh, I want to train. Please pick me, 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 me. So um, the idea of being a happy athlete is that that you've enabled the horse to do the work that you want it to do easily or with more ease because you trained towards the goal. So the reason for training, hopefully I've made my, hopefully I've achieved my goal, <laughs> is to achieve some goals and to be able to do the movements of the test easily so they all look like the horse wants to do it. So you get eight, eight, good, eight, eight. <laughs> and if you don't, you know, if you don't, if something fails and you know it's not up to scratch, then get your test back and go, ho go home, analyze it. And it's just feedback. For me, you're writing your test. You're just putting your training to the test. All you can do is what you do at home. The horse won't suddenly go better because you're at a competition. They can only do as good as you do at home. So if you're happy with your test at home, just go and try and repeat it. If you're not, choose to stay at home another week or go out and think, right, this isn't perfect, but I want some feedback anyway. My horse needs the practice of the warm up or whatever, or I need the practice of the test writing. But if you're not happy with your test at home, don't expect to get um, you know, your big mark so, because they won't do better suddenly. <laughs> Great, thank you very much for listening. I hope that helped. <laughs> and um, hopefully we see everybody out at the competitions. I would really like to thank uh, my device because it's not just the work uh, that you put into your horse, but it's also the feel that you give them to turn them into the athlete. And I'd really love to thank Horseland Gold Coast for beautiful gear, always uh, outfitting us as well as they can, which is pretty damn good. And I would really like to thank Tracy and Bastian because this is their horse and I pinch myself every day that I get to work on him and I always hope that I'm doing a good job for them and for him and that I can do him justice. So thank you very much, Tracy. I know she's here today. Thank you so much, <laughs> this boss. Thank good you, boy. Nicole.